So that makes it really not a great attachment to use on the gun. You don't... Hey, buddy. Okay. Hello, gamers, and welcome back to another video. So today, I'm going to be showing you 15 best tips to improve and get better at Phantom Forces. And a lot of these tips are going to be helpful for even higher ranked players. So if you're struggling a little bit at this game and you want to know how you can improve your KD and just play better, then this video will be probably pretty helpful. My first tip, and this is something that everybody can do, because most people never even attempt to do this, and that is using a weapon variety. In this game, you have a limited number of rounds in your gun, and then you have to pick up somebody else's and keep using it unless you find some of your same type of ammo, which isn't always going to happen. So if you want to actually play well, you need to know how to use every gun. So actually, using a variety of weapons is super, super important. Probably one of the most underrated things that you can do to actually improve yourself at this game. That way, if you're forced to pick up a DMR, you're actually going to know how to continue to get kills with it, and also you're going to know the niche of every single gun. For example, if a player never used the G11, they're not going to know how to use it effectively, you know? They're just not going to do well. Wow, you just spawned in on your teammate. And of course, you're not always going to be able to use the G11 because not everybody has it unlocked. In fact, most players don't have it unlocked at all. But as you can see there, I knew that the TCR had a lot of penetration depth, so I was actually able to wallbang that guy. And a lot of players wouldn't be able to do that because they just wouldn't know the niche of every gun. So using at least one gun in every category is effective. Using every gun in the game is even better, but of course, you're not going to have every gun in the game. And using every gun in the game is also super annoying because there's so many. So try to use at least one or two guns from every single category and you'll improve a lot. The next tip I have is something that a lot of lower ranks, even higher ranks actually fall into and that's really an all right behavior that's not like an objectively awful thing but it's probably not the best thing you can do and that is basically not using any variety in your optics. I'm not saying you have to use a different optic on every gun, that's not really necessary but you should be trying out all of the optics including iron sights at the beginning but of course iron sights are not going to be the best so use a variety of actual sights but not really all the iron sights because of course something like the half ring sight or the H and K sight is not really going to be that useful. You're really going to want to go for Mars Sight, Delta Sight, Pillai, DDHB Reflex, Marsco Electro, Coyote Sight, and even like an ACOG or something. If you're using all those sights, you're going to know which one you like, you're going to know the niches of each of them, and you're going to actually know which one is good for like a certain type of gun. And who knows, you might actually play better with some optics than others. That's something that I really can feel. Like I play way better with the Mars Sight on the Allgate 2, but I don't play with the Mars Sight on something like, I don't know, the MP5. It's really weird. I use some optics really well on some guns and some really poorly on others, but using a variety has actually taught me which ones I'm actually good with. Next up, we have the opportunity to switch between full stock or a move stock, a long barrel, and a short barrel, and any kind of attachment that would affect your handling negatively. Because I feel like a lot of people fall into this thing of like the most recoil control necessary is the most important thing, and sure, that is a very important stat. However, using a full stock, a long barrel, and a Harasiku R grip is going to make your gun have really, really annoying handling. You're going to have super awful wonk speed, super awful aiming speed, and the gun isn't going to feel very good. And if you're not getting around very quickly, you're not going to really need that recoil because you're not going to really run into that many people. Your handling is going to be worse and you're going to be much easier to hit with a gun so other people will actually have less trouble trying to kill you and overall it's not necessarily going to be just a direct upgrade. So make sure to actually know what your handling is like and if you're actually willing to sacrifice that amount of handling for like a full stock or something like that. For me a lot of the time the full stock is not necessary. I don't use it on the AS Val. I don't really use it on the Colt SMG too much. And basically any gun that I want to have some pretty good handling I don't really want to use that type of attachment because it's just going to be a direct downgrade for me. Especially if I don't really have a huge problem with the recoil. The Colt SMG is very controllable recoil. Really just got to pull down. It just has a ton of vertical. And the ASVAL is extremely accurate. So I don't really need to use... What are you doing, buddy? A full stock on both of those guns, and I don't really use that. But it's really up to you. You don't really know which one you're going to want. Same with the Type 20. I don't use long barrel or full stock on that gun because I feel like the handling gets really bad with that. That's just my opinion. You could, if you wanted to, just keep that in mind. Next up, we have learning the better movement. And if you haven't watched any movement guide, including mine, anyone else's, mine talks about everything. It talks about imp sliding, dingus sliding, super jumping, everything that you would need to know. And a lot of high rank players still don't know how to imp slide and you need to know. It just basically makes your movement faster. It's not really that difficult to understand, but once you do, it is super effective. The next thing that's super important is knowing your advanced stats. Knowing whether a gun can two shot, headshot, one shot, headshot, how far can three hit kill, the velocity is really going to help you understand what you're supposed to be doing with your gun. For example, if I had a Mark 11 500 Phantom, a lot of people might not know that this has such low velocity, so you're not going to aim above a person when they really should be. And you also might not know that this can one shot to the torso because it doesn't do 100 damage, but it has such a massive torso multi that it can one shot to the torso. So stuff like RPM and magazine capacity is super important to know, but also knowing I was aiming 
way higher than I should have to from a Mark 11, but I know it has 500 Phantom, and I know that has 1,000 Velocity. I also know it can one-shot headshot, so going for the headshots is really important with it. So just keep that in mind, I have an advanced stats guy, but really the main things you need to know is reload speed, walk speed, ammo type, and everything right here, except minimum time to kill, that doesn't really matter, and suppression doesn't really matter, but pen, velocity, damage ranges, multis, that's what you're really going to want to know. Those are the advanced stats that really massively affect your gun, and of course recoil does, but like it's hard to understand what recoil does in this game, and what you should really be looking for is just, does it increase my recoil, and just try it out for yourself and see if it has more. Another trap I see a lot of people falling into, and this will actually hurt your gameplay, is very obstructive skins, and I'm not talking about like good looking skins. You can make good looking skins that don't have a massive effect on how your gun looks. However, if you use something like this, this is literally the sun. We're looking at a gun that is literally the sun. This is kind of obstructive, I'm not gonna lie. Same with attachments. You can be using like a DCL 120 and you really can't see as well. Especially try out the Tommy gun with the DCL, you won't be able to see. So that makes it really not a great attachment to use on the gun. You don't... Hey buddy. Okay. You don't want to be using something like that because it's just bad, you know? It'll just hurt your gameplay. Same with this gun. This is so obstructive. It's really difficult to see what I'm aiming at. Try not to use a super neon skin is the main thing. A better idea maybe is to use force field. The next feature you should always be using is reload canceling and reloading at all times because you can cancel a reload. So you don't really need to hold off on a reload like you maybe would in other games. Because in this game, you can just cancel your reload midway through, which means if you enter a fight while reloading, it doesn't matter. You just got to click one extra time and you're back in the fight. The downside of the reloading in this game is that you can empty reload. If your gun is completely out of bullets, it's actually going to take a significantly longer amount of time to reload, as you can see, and then the normal reload is just this. This can take about like 50% longer, so really having that empty reload is a bad idea. You're gonna have to basically reload all the time, because empty reloading can take a lot longer, especially on a gun like a sniper rifle. Assault rifles are not too bad, but like sniper rifles, since you have to bolt them after reloading, it can take like an extra two to three seconds, which is a long time, you know? You don't really want to be doing that. So that's just something you should always keep keep in mind. The next tip, and this is pretty simple, is aim out every single time you fire a sniper shot. As for you, you can get away with it, but like every bolt action, basically, you should be aiming out after every single snipe, because you don't really want to be fully aiming in for like five seconds straight. Not only is the recoil going to be a lot more annoying if you're fully aimed in the entire time, and also it's just going to be super annoying, because if you're aimed in somebody else in your peripheral vision, you would have been able to see if you weren't aimed in. That was such a good freaking random jump there. They're just going to be able to kill you while you're freaking aimed in, you know? You'll get killed a lot less randomly, you know? Normally, you're going to get killed and be like, I don't know where that that guy was. He was freaking nowhere around me. That's because you're aimed in and you can only see like right here instead of all of this. The next thing is super jump canceling. When you super jump, you can either do this and then be on the ground and have to get back up or you can super jump and aim in and then keep sprinting. There are very few opportunities where actually not canceling your super jump is going to be better. And those are going to be like, I don't know, fights where you want to land up on here and then being prone to actually kill people. And that's going to be pretty rare. If you're going around, you don't want to ever not super jump cancel. Basically just jump forward and then you're back. If I'm in prone after I jump, I'm not going to be able to more effect effectively survive a fight. The next thing a lot of people don't do is strafing when aiming down sights. The most effective way you could use this is like this, where you're actually leaving cover already aimed down sights. And a lot of people won't see that coming. You'll actually get kind of a jump on some people because you're able to immediately start shooting because you're already aimed. This is way better if you're using like a PDW because you get the faster walk speed, but it's also pretty good all around. The other thing is just while you're fighting, you can also just strafe around, which is pretty nice. You can remain on the move, but also just still be shooting, which is definitely an underrated feature that a lot of people don't use. The second you aim down sights, you don't have to stop moving. A lot of people basically just like aim down sights and then sit there, you know? And you don't have to move towards what you're shooting. You can move to the side as well. That's the main thing that strafing is. It's basically just moving to the side. And this can allow you to basically get to cover while also shooting at a person, which is, you know, pretty effective. I'm already in cover again. The next thing is all taming, and I don't think all taming is actually as effective as you'd expect. MT Terminator, sure, but if you're using like a canted sight or a different ACOG sight and switching between the aims, that's actually not as effective as simply running a good all-around sight. For example, the Coyote sight works at basically any range. May as well just use this and not use like a canted delta and an ACOG because you can just run this only for all ranges because you can run this and then not have to ever switch your sight to something else, which means you don't have to press T all the time, you're just going to go through everybody, roll through them, and never have to like worry about different optics. A sniper, you could use a coyote but like let's be real it's kind of more fun to actually use like a real scope on a sniper rifle and then quick scope people and using a canted delta sounds like a good idea but just hip fire you know like a sniper rifle hip fire is really good same with quick scoping it's still really really good and you still have to press t maybe even twice which is super annoying i don't like that it's just not quite as effective that's why you see most high rank players not using a canted sight 
Next thing is paying attention to the reload speed on your gun. Some guns actually seem like they're done with the reload and they're actually not. And then you're going to reload cancel accidentally because you thought you could fire because you thought the reload was over. Just go to your stats, look at the advanced stats and see, okay, this is a two second reload versus the MP7 is a 2.4. So this is going to take 0.4 seconds longer. And sometimes an extended mag doesn't actually slow down your reload, but in this case it does. That's why the MP7 extended mag is so bad. It has a four second empty reload time, which is like LMG length or a PDW, which is pretty bad. The next tip that's very important is the muzzle velocity of your gun. The faster your RPM is, the less this actually matters. For example, the ASVAL has 1500 velocity. That is the same as the SL9. The only disadvantage of the SL9 is that it has such slow velocity. And it's the same as the ASVAL. The SL9 is considered a super high skill gun because you have to hit the headshots with low velocity, but the ASVAL velocity is the same, and the ASVAL isn't really considered a very high skill gun. It's a very easy gun to use. The reason for this is because the ASVAL has 800 RPM and is automatic. This allows you to actually use the tracers of your previous bullets to actually affect your drop and actually figure out how high you have to aim above a guy. So the more RPM you have, the less velocity actually will have an effect on your gun. So just keep that in mind if you're using like any gun in the game. The higher your velocity is, the better of course. The ASVAL would be considerably better with better velocity, but of course it doesn't have that. It has 800 RPM, so the velocity doesn't matter as much as you'd expect. The next thing that's kind of important and you should probably keep in mind is that using an auto gun on burst doesn't actually lower recoil. You used to lower your recoil by like 10% and it was pretty good, but now it doesn't do that. The only gun that I really recommend the burst on is the ECR because the ECR has pretty bad ammo consumption. And if you're not really that great, you might actually do better with the gun on burst. I never really use the burst because I don't really like the burst. I prefer to auto spray with it, but you can use the burst if you want to. Other than that, unless it's like the G11, do not use the burst. Just use the auto. The last thing you should do is actually play smart and learn from your mistakes. If you die because of a certain gun in a certain range or something, or because of a certain area of the map or something like that, remember that. Don't just keep playing the exact same way. Figure out what you're doing wrong and actually learn to improve. If you're not doing that, you're not going to get better at the game. Sure, your aim will improve over time, but you're not going to become a better Phantom Forces player, just a better FPS game player. If you want to actually get good, you're going to have to have good game sense when it comes to actual Phantom Forces playing like this. You know, that guy had an M231 because I used the movement in the game and jumped over an area into an area I knew he was because I understood the map. You'll learn like where people are going to be spawning, how people actually tend to play in this game, what guns people tend to use and what ranges those guns are good at and try to improve as a player. You can always improve on your game sense, you know, always understand more about a map. And if you're actually learning to do that, you're going to get drastically better at the game. But yeah, if you guys did enjoy, make sure to like and subscribe if you're new. Comment down below any more tips and maybe I'll make a part two, but I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Have a nice day.